Hey everybody, welcome to the League of Legends Anonymous podcast. I am your host, Killzill. Welcome to episode 231, the ARAM episode. I'm here actually today with Danger Penguin and Tycho Tumpard. Say hello, guys. Hi, hi guys. Hi guys, how's everyone doing? <laughs> so enthusiastic. Really, really excited to be here. I'm super I, uh, excited. I love ARAM, so let's... I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about it. Aram episode, man. Aram is awesome, dude. It's too bad we don't have uh, we don't have Astros here. You know, he would, yeah, he, he would love. He's too busy for us right too, now. He? he loves Aram, dude. It's his favorite game mode. Mm-hmm. He wishes it was ranked. I think. I think we all do. Yeah, mm. I think that would be awesome having a ranked Aram. That that'd be awesome. I like Aram. I, I have no problem with Aram. <laughs> awesome. Well, <laughs> um. Speaking of, well, the next best thing, actually, to ranked ARAM is an ARAM tournament. And so I'd like to announce that we are doing an ARAM tournament with the Lola podcast. Uh, information on how to sign up for that is in our Discord channel under the Announcements tab. So click there, fill out the Google form, get your summoner name in. That way I can put you on a team. And, yeah, we're going to play some ARAMs a little more seriously. And mm-hmm. today we're going to discuss some ARAM strats, going to discuss some ARAM changes that have happened with the last patch, um, and our resident ARAM expert, Danger Penguin, and Tycho Tumpard are going to give us some help with that today. So, thanks guys, thanks for showing up. Yeah, yeah, no I th- problem. I, I think we should give a shout out to our Patreons first, um, they're awesome, they allow us to do fun things like these tournaments. That's true. And um, hopefully, you know, we'll still be able to give out prizes to the winners of the tournament like we have in our last couple of tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're awesome. We really appreciate it. It, um, it really helps us out, helps keep the podcast going. And it's uh, we, we it's 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 beyond phenomenal. They're a- just absolutely. they're great. Couldn't do this without you guys. Thank yep. you so much. Th- and we thank you for your money. Continue to <laughs> improve upon uh, the kind of programming that we can offer. Um, we are doing community games, as you all know, um, on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time. Doing my best to get those streamed and casted so you guys can review your games and uh, get better at uh, League of Legends by um, getting in-game commentary. So. And there's nothing better than hearing me criticize one of your plays. Just ask Bebo. Which you know, happens so. nonstop if Danger is actually <laughs> on the other side. Dear God. Hey, I give, I give a lot of kudos out there, too. That's fair enough. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. I think uh, let's first discuss the patch, some of the ARAM changes that have happened lately. Um, Absolutely. Back, back to Bilgewater. Thank God. I know, man. Uh, it's it's the better version of ARAM for there, sure. Honestly, there's one weird thing. I'm not going to lie. I love playing ARAM. I hate the color of the map. It's so blue. Everything's bright. I can't I can't see skill shots. I can't see myself like when I'm when I'm kiting. So I'm glad Bilgewater is back. Like, I like it when it's dark so I can see what I'm doing. Like I, I don't know if you guys experienced that, but I'm like, I might be blind, but I like it better when it's not blue. Awesome. No, I, I love the map. I think it's a gorgeous map. My only issue with it is the snowballs. They make them like this puke green color that I'm colorblind, so it just looks like the floor to me. <laughs> so it's almost impossible for me to dodge the snowballs Sounds like a because I don't problem, notice yeah. them until they splash on me, and I'm like, son of a bitch. Aren't they so that's though? It's my only real they, issue. It's oranges, yeah. I think they're oranges. Uh, well, it's puke green to me, which is the same as the... Uh, the color of the floor, so it makes it very hard to dodge it. Right. I can notice them when they go through the the bush, though. Okay, so just stand in the bush and you're fine. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But besides that, I do. I I think it's a great map and it's very mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah, it, I don't know. I think Bilgewater in general is way more interesting than the Freljord. Like, it's thematically the, the characters have good backstories. Like Freljord is so weird to me. I don't know. It's just like. It feels like the beginner version of a fantasy game, like with Ash mm. and Sejuani and whatnot. Bilgewater has, like, actual character. Um, there's no necessarily, like, good or evil side. It's just pirates. Right, well, like, that's pirates in general, <laughs> right? Fucking, they're always... Yeah, <laughs> who hates pirates? Like, they're awesome. So, <laughs> so um, let's talk about the first change. They added bands to ARAM. I, uh, I think that was pretty good. Ah, see, I'm the opposite. 
Okay. Eight ram to me, all random, all mid. I don't get all random if you got bands. So get rid of the bands, in my opinion. I don't like them. They, so we'll go to the second change right away as well, just no, because that no, no, no. ties into it. Hold no, on. it ties into it, though. Okay, okay. Because they've added balancing champions, okay? Okay. So they've they've done the Nexus Blitz thing where they've they've said, okay, Sona's got a 70% win rate um, in ARAM because she's the fucking best in ARAM. So now what we're going to do, we're going to nerf her healing, and we're going to increase her damage taken. So give her 10% increased damage taken, and healing does 25% less da- uh, healing, right? So if they're going to balance that way, then I don't think that bans are necessary because they're already trying to um, normalize people, right? Okay, so we've got no. like two changes going on. You've got bans added, and then you've got... A balancing effect with like the poke champions, which seem to have kind of like a, an unnecessary strength, right? Um, I don't know though. Like, I I am I don't know. I'm against the bands overall. I agree with you for the most part. Um, I still still don't like Yasuo though. <laughs> so, right, right. Oh if, if Yasuo I'm didn't exist, very happy that he is still the leader. If Yasuo was, was like a perma ban, you wouldn't want bans. But since he's not a perma ban, like like he's just like banned from the game, like destroyed, yeah, yeah. deleted from the game, you wouldn't want bans. But since since he's in there, you do. Yeah, I, I realize that like my philosophy on that doesn't make any sense. It's totally lopsided, but yeah, uh, just ban Yasuo and and the rest are fine. Because so. the worst part is your team will ban champions that you want to play, right? Right. So yeah, and, and you can't yeah. blame them, right? You want to ban, uh, you know, Sona. You want to ban Ziggs. You want to ban Zareth. You know, there's there's a lot of good choices for bans out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Pike is really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I, I get it. I get it. You don't want to play against them, but you know your team might want to play them, and it's all random. So if they get them, hard luck, right? Sometimes yeah. that happens. I guess, like, um, I, personally, like, those champions, I don't hate playing against them all the time. It's just those those games when when their team is just completely stacked against you. And, again, it's like it is all random. So, you know, you're shit out of luck because they got all the best ARAM champions and you didn't. So right. I guess, like, like, those are the times when you appreciate the band system. But I, I guess, I guess like, I, I like how they did... How they did make it so like you know poke champions if it's more than what 900 units like x amount of distance like their damage is reduced by like 15 20 percent right that yeah, was 15%. really smart i like that that was really smart and i don't mind that i i think that's a good change if they're not hard balancing champions but if you're hard balancing champions anyway just nuke some more of their damage right why, why do you have to have it be 900 units away why don't you just give Zareth another 10 percent off on his damage because i feel like both is kind of like a heavy-handed approach and it's going to be harder for them to separate the statistics because you're not going to be able to say oh look Zareth is you know ba- down to 52 percent we did it right and they'd be like what did we do right the 900 units away or the balance that we gave them yeah, like, i don't we, fucking we know we did them both at the same time at the same the time. second the second you manipulate multiple variables, you don't have a solution. So I, I I like that change. I think that would be a good change to ARAM in general if they weren't also auto-balancing champions at the same time. So I feel like they're they're throwing a lot at the wall, and I get it. It's experimental. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they end up sticking with in the future. Because this is... Yeah, this is just for, I, I believe, this event. And then it'll go back to normal, and then they're going to take lessons learned and see what they want to add in. Mm-hmm. Right, but it's and in, but because they change multiple variables at the same time, their data is corrupted, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about my favorite change. Okay. After 15 minutes, the minion wave spawn rate will increase. Minions will gain movement speed, and champions deal more damage to structures. I think this is an awesome change because when you play an ARAM, you are looking to have some fun and play a short game. And we've all been there when we've been locked in one of those 35-minute ARAMs, and you're like, Mm -hmm. how the hell is this still going on? And I really like the idea of them trying to ramp things up to get them done in 20 minutes. I think that's a a smart approach. It'll happen for both teams, so if you're ahead, you'll start to push a little bit more ahead. And I think Mm -hmm. that's a... That's a clever mechanic. I'll, I'll be very curious to see what the data is on that because current. Well, okay. When I 
was probably previously playing ARAMs, I felt like games were really snowball-y and like they ended quickly anyway. Whereas, you know, I'm based on like who had the better poke comp, right? And right. then um, now, since we've kind of like evened out those things, I find games are going almost 30 minutes. Like I, I believe we played three ARAMs the other day that went above 25 minutes each. Which... And I think that's due to the balance. Okay. Right? Because it's harder to push a and it's harder to push a lead when your character's doing twenty percent less damage arbitrarily, right? Sure. So, you know, like you can be up but you're just not you don't have the same kill pressure that you would have had, you know, four days ago before the patch hit. Um, so I, I think that's adding to it. I do like the mechanic, but you're you're right. I'd like to see it be more effective because I don't I don't love thirty thirty five minute A RAM games. I think you're not looking for that kind of an extended battle. If you were, you would have joined a, a Summoner's Rift game. Right. I think I think people also don't really know when to die in a ram. Oh, yeah. They don't know at that moment, like, okay, I should go die and go spend, like, my 2k gold, 3k gold. I think that's the other issue. And maybe this is just my personal experience, but one of the things I like about a ram is just, you know, I'm going in for that team fight experience right there and then. I can get it in, like, less than five minutes, right? And I, right. that's one of the only reasons why I play the game. So I think maybe some people, like, there's like, I want to get six items. I want to see what I can do in a team fight of six items or five items. So I'm going to try to like play this game out as, as much as possible. I think that's, I, I personally think that's another reason why these games last longer than the intended 15, 20 minutes. Because, because people just love, the they, they love get, team fighting. They want to, they want to do times. some, some crazy ass, you know, experimental builds that they don't want to waste their time spending 35 plus minutes in Summer's Rift when they could probably do it in just 20, 25 minutes in ARAM. Right. So. I think that's one of the other reasons. So, I, like, yeah, like, like Danger said, like the 15 minutes, uh, the minion buffs like, after 15 minutes, it's, it's a good, it's a good idea. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's similar new? to a change they made in Summoner's Rift, right, where minions move faster. Yep. Like that happened. I don't know, like six or seven patches ago, probably. Yeah, oh, no, it was, yeah, it was at the start minute, of the yeah. season, right? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a preseason change. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and. Which is exactly six or seven patches ago, so you're, you're dead on. Okay. You are smart. <laughs> My Thanks. internal clock. My circadian <laughs> uh, Alright, so what other changes did, did we see? Um, there's there's only one other... They've added a couple of items into the game. They, they always do that. The new mix, summoner. Smash. Yeah, but the new summoner is the other big one. Um, the, oh. the, they replace barrier with backtrack. I think it's a really cool ability where... It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's cool. The shield really does suck. Yeah, the shield's weak, but the backtrack ability is neat because it allows you to make some some clever plays. You can so, go in and then pop back, and that's nice. Yeah. The distance is pretty small. It's significant if you're melee. Yeah, that's the difference. It's yeah. small if you're ranged. So yeah, I think it's, that's, I think it's, that's I, a big I think difference. It's like, it feels like maybe five, 600 units, like not that far. It doesn't feel that far at all. Yeah, with, mm -hmm. with melee, I think it's something like 1,200, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, yeah. So if you if you're playing a ranged champion, you might not get the pullback that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has like a maybe like I think just over a minute thirty uh, cooldown. So it's it's up pretty frequently. Right. I mean, so you can use yeah. it for a lot of plays. Still, uh, it, still I, it's, it's just thirty. It's, it's pretty it's substantial a, for ARAM, I feel like. But yeah. It's true. Yeah. Wasn't uh, what, what was it? There was an item they had before. It was a boots item, right? And it was a lethal. It was in uh, Nexus Blitz. You remember that item, where after four seconds it'll take you back to where you rest. Yeah, that was item? a Nexus Blitz. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is like kind of the same thing. It's pretty weaker. I, I thought they were bringing back that item. It was super. Cool. So I mean, it's all right. Backtrack's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I, yeah, it's not great, but it's. Yeah. I think it's interesting. It's better than having barrier. You mm -hmm. know, like in 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 a ram. I think I think it's an improvement on that because so it allows it's, you. It's a, a balanced version of the item that was a Nexus Blitz, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's a, the, I think the one it's a mini that, version of the, yeah. of the Nexus Blitz oh, okay. item. Like, it's a very mini version. Yeah, fair um, the other two items, well, Ghost Walkers we had before, that, I, I, I think they should just bring that item, like, full time. I think it's a good item. I, I, I don't see any harm in it. You, just, you get four seconds to seriously change your position in ARAM, which is incredibly hard as a melee. Like, have you, like imagine playing someone like Nunu. You want to just get behind someone and just get like a three, four man alt. At least with Ghost Walkers, you can do that. No, I like uh, Ghost Walkers. I think yeah. it's good. The uh, Mariner's Vengeance. I sincerely, I sincerely think that item needs to be like 
I don't know. I, I think 210 second cooldown is not enough. I think it's pretty strong on a lot of champions. Like it's very 80s. strong on certain champions. It's ADCs crazy in particular. Strong. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, 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 I don't know. Like only as a passive, and I was thinking, you know, what if it? What if they make it something like like Edge of Night, where you have to activate it, and in the last like ten seconds, you have to pop it in ten seconds, right? And then you're going to use that more on champions that that are more divey. So like an like an assassin or like something like Lissandra. I really like, like it tank. on uh, CC tanks, right? Mm -hmm. So you go in, you blow all your CC, you you, you you muck things up for a while, and then they kill you. And then they once they kill you, all your CC cooldowns are reset. So if you have, like, long cooldowns, then boom, you're back right back in it. You can CC again for the next four seconds. And I, I think that, that can be really strong. Mm -hmm. So once you die and you're in that, like, ghost form, are you you're... inhibited in any sort of way, like movement speed or abilities or anything else? You're, you're the same. You get it. It's, it's a cleanse of all crowd control on you that was that was on you when you died. Okay. And it resets all of your basic cooldowns. Okay. So, wow. you know, like, you go in, you blow all your cooldowns, you die, you come back to life with no... You can get CC'd again, but you get you get a refresh of your CC, and then you can um, blow your three cooldowns again. Not your um, not your R, but okay. yeah, QWE. Jesus, that does seem kind of overloaded. But it does have, a, you know, it's, what, you said 210 seconds, so um, three and a half minutes. That can... It's a later item, right? And you're usually not getting it first. You're getting it probably third. Sure. So at that point, you might only use it once. So you have to you have to weigh that against the value as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's all the like major changes. Um, I guess a couple questions for you guys about ARAMs in general. Um, so I know there are a lot of people who don't play ARAMs for whatever reason. Why do you think they should? Like, make a case to me for why someone who's like, uh, it's not, you know, there's no st strategy involved, it's just a big dog pile, you just throw all your spells around and it's a big brawl. Like, why should I play ARAM? How does that benefit me as a League of Legends player? Oh, that that hurts my soul, though, <laughs> when, when I hear all of those words in, in that combination. It's just a, everyone run mid and dink around and don't do shit. Right. ARAM has strats, and that's what we're here to teach you today. Um, okay. Here's what I love for ARAM. Um, you're tilted and ranked. Go play an ARAM. You're doing great and ranked, and you only got 20 minutes. Go play an ARAM. You know, like it. It's it's great as like, and it's really great to play across um, multiple levels with friends. Okay. So, you know, like when you're when you're playing with your bronze friend and your silver friend and your gold friend and your plat friend, it's a lot easier to play an ARAM than it is to play a Summoner's Rift normal cuz that Summoner's Rift normal if you're plat and the uh, the opposing teams and you let's say you play jungle and the opposing team's top is plat and your bronze friend is playing top. He's not having that much fun most likely, right? It's sure. not going to be all that fun in lane. Now that doesn't mean you guys can't win. That doesn't mean you can't work together. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. It just means it's a little more difficult. But in an ARAM, eh, yeah, it, it, it's a little more, you know, like understood that, you know, like you're going to get a wider variety of skills and you're going to get people who are very skilled on their one tricks and people who might not know what Zoe does at all. So, you know, like I'm that. I'm feeling a personal slight there all of a sudden. That, that <laughs> might not even know that you hit Q twice with Zoe, you know? Like, mm. it's, it's, it's very possible that you could just throw it behind you and walk around in a circle for a while. So, you know, you these know. are all all <laughs> things that might exist in an ARAM that, that you can you can have fun with and you can laugh and you can have a good time. So, I, I like it for those two things. I, if I'm, if I'm, burnt out on solo queue and i need a break or you know like i just i'm not in the mood for another long summoner's rift game or maybe to get you know maybe you, you're tilted a little bit i think a ram is a good good relief valve for that but that yeah. doesn't mean there's not strategy involved okay well, we'll get to strategy but just for some clarity's sake um danger and i've been playing some a rams doing some research to think about things to talk about for this particular podcast um and uh yeah i played i played zoe or, or zoe for the first time in an aram recently uh 
yeah, I didn't really know how that champion worked or <laughs> how, you, how you throw the Q or anything like that. They're you like throw, literally you, walking you land, through You it. land E and you t make profit off it. That's it's, it. It's, Very it's easy. Really, really easy for you guys to like say those things, but like <laughs> my fingers know one thing, and that's QWQ with Zillion, and that's about it. So, he was he was running right at the opponent, and then he would just shoot the Q straight forward. Oh my! They're like, God. man, that's not doing much damage, guys. And we're like, no, it is not, buddy. <laughs> Oh my. It was like I was like, wait a minute, how does this champion do damage? <laughs> then I realized, oh, it, it requires like you have to think about everything and time it correctly and jump forward and then I'm like, what in the world? Who designed this garbage? <laughs> the uh, the devil himself. The devil himself. Exactly Certainty right. T. He also designed uh Yasuo, your favorite champion in the oh, game. Oh god. So. No wonder I hate that bastard. Okay. <laughs> Motherfuck. Um Right, so uh, Tyco, gonna... why do you play A-Rams? Why do I play? I mean, a lot of the things that you listed. Um, the other thing is, like I said earlier, like I want to get into that team fight. I want to get into that. I want to get into the fun, okay? There is fun in laning. There is fun in 1v1ing and just outplaying in a fun. But if I'm playing like a champion that's like team fight oriented, like I want to get in there and I want to just like make the coolest fucking play ever. Like yesterday I was playing, I was playing NAR, okay? And like, I was running Aftershock, and you know, Aftershock's like a pretty shitty rune on, on NAR because you can't proc it pretty often. All right. Like it's ARAM, you know, it's, I can do I can do the ex these experimental things in ARAM because it doesn't affect me as if I would do it in ranked, right? But I still take ARAM more seriously than when I would like a normal Summoner's Rift match, right? And and yesterday I landed like a five man NAR ulti, and like that was great. That I went in there, I, it took me no more than five to eight minutes to do what I wanted to do in a rep just to have that one cool ass team fight. Um, it, again, it's like, it's, it's, it's all about like how much time I want to spend playing a game and like how seriously I'm going to take it. Like I would play a Ram over a normal, a normal draft because I'm not going to take it seriously. I don't know what I want to play. Right. Like in rank, I know what I want to play. I mean, if I want to play top, I'll play like Urgot or Camille or just Fiora. Right. I'll just play the meta champions. Cause I want to get the LP right in normals. I'll be like, I don't know what I want to play because I don't want to play this champion like I played enough, right? But right. I don't want to. I don't want to try this new champion because I might be shit and lose, and I don't want to lose. In A Ram, that's taken out of my hands, right? Which is bad because I don't know what I'm going to get. But it's good because I don't have to decide what I want to play. I'll take what I can get. If I don't like it, I'll re-roll or trade. And if it doesn't happen, then I'll just I'll just play it out. It's only 15, 20 minutes. It's not 35 minutes. And who knows? Maybe I'll do something crazy or I'll like champion. So that's like that's that's that that those are my main reasons. Sure. Yeah. I I can definitely connect, connect with you on the whole like learning new champions things. I mean, obviously, like yeah, Zoe was uh, one of those things I did learn a lot about. Right, learned mm -hmm. that I know nothing. Um, <laughs> however, <laughs> when it comes to other other champions that are a little more familiar, like for instance, like we have, I played the Sandra the next game, right? And I played her maybe once or twice, but like. I was actually able to get off, um, you know, some of the combos and the idea of like delaying a team fight for like eight or nine seconds at a time with Zonia's and her ult and that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do when I feel adventurous, when I feel like not playing Zillion, perhaps, but not like taking something into a normal game. It's really nice to be able to do that in a kind of safe sort of sandbox environment, um, which is a ram for me. However, I do feel like a ram is not a good place to learn team fighting or at least not kind of the advanced tactics of team fighting especially in the current summoners rift meta um like sure you can like calculate cooldowns and understand like you know en engagements and whatnot but right now team fighting in summoners rift is like so skirmishy and there's so many like flanks and things happening f from the jungle and whatnot that like really impact the team fight and having that sort of like map awareness by watching the mini map while the team fight is starting to happen to see who's coming in from the side. But I feel like a Ram is not something you should like use to practice as a, um, a, a team fighting training simulator. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and in fact, it teaches some people bad habits. It teaches you to like kind of tunnel vision on certain targets like the ADC when maybe you need to actually back off because of who's coming in from the side. Um, but that's just kind of my take on that. Um, well, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that could that could make sense. Some, I mean, some people just might like they have that mentality. Like, you're not going to take a ram seriously, so they're not going to try the hardest in team fighting. So 
I guess I can argue with that. Like, you'll never get the the best experience unless you just play ranked. Is that, is that, is that kind of what you're? I just think it to? teaches you some bad habits when it comes to okay. team fighting, and and I think that like it may be good for sort of an introductory type way to learn team fighting. Like it can if you do if you play a bunch of ARAMs right the entire team fight process will kind of start to slow down for you. You'll start to recognize who has what spells when um, and like how engagement go engagements goes and like how to maybe fight front to back or, or defend against that and disengage. But when it comes to like um, the more complicated aspects of team fights, um, it can teach you bad habits like tunnel vision. I, yeah, I, I think that it dumbs it down too, right? Snowball, right, it, right. it dumbs it down. So, you know, like, okay, here I'm a tank and I can just insta-engage, right? Because sure. I hit my snowball. And it, um, and, and like you said, it takes everything out, like split pushing, flanks, all of that stuff. If, if literally you're in a, you know, bronze one game and all five of you are standing looking at each other in mid lane, um, then, then it can be pretty similar um, to what you're experiencing. But that is hopefully not most likely what's occurring uh yeah. in 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 your games so i i agree it it, it, it gives you a dumbed down version of the team fight experience but you can you can derive some information from it you can figure out sure. what is my role in a team fight now you might be able to not execute it perfectly in an aram because of all of the extra you know like maybe you're a peel tank and you're like okay i got a peel for my adc and then your adc walks out gets hit by two snowballs and all of a sudden they're all over them. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's well, kind of hard to peel at that point, right? But right. um, but it, it 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 can help teach you some of those basic skills. So like, yeah, the mechanics of team fighting and not necessarily like the macro on the map awareness of team fighting. Right. Cool. Yeah. Well, um. So I hope that's enough to convince you to play ARAM forever, guys. <laughs> now we've convinced gang. you to play ARAM. Now. There's, There's a proper one, way to do it. There is a proper way to do it. And we're going to run through some of the ideas. And I'd like to start with the most basic first thing to do. What's that, when you Andrew? enter a video game that you are playing competitively, whether it's an easy mode, whether you're playing bots, whether you're playing ranked, I believe you should have the mentality that you are trying to win. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be having fun. That doesn't mean you can't try new builds. That doesn't mean you can't play new champions. But the goal should still be to win. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that can be lost in ARAM. And I, I don't understand why. Like, Because when I queue up for a game, I'm always trying to have fun. I'm playing a video game, right? I'm trying to have a good time. That's the, if, you're, if you're queuing up for a video game knowing you're going to have a bad time, then it might not be the right time to be queuing up for it's, the video it's game. Not, it's not just any video game. It's League of Legends, you know, the best, exactly. the best eSport electronic video game in the world. It, it, it is without a doubt. It's the only game I play currently and have we're, for like the last like four years. So We're eGamers. eGamers Unite. So when you play League of Legends, no matter what mode it is, I, I don't care if we were playing Nexus Blitz, I don't care if you're playing Odyssey, my goal is to have fun and to win. Those are two equivalent goals. I think you should be trying to have fun, and I think you should try to win. And uh, and unfortunately, sometimes that gets a little bit lost. So I encourage you, even when you play an ARAM, you, know, you always get people who type, dude, it's an ARAM, who cares if I start? Dude, it's an ARAM, I'm going to AFK because, you know, like, I got to go to the bathroom or something like that. Well, in ARAM, you have 17 minutes to play the game, let's say, and your guy's gone for five. Do you think you really stand a great chance of winning that game at that point? It, it just kind of screws over every one of the game. It's... It, it's I never have fun stomping a team with an AFK. Um, I never have fun trying to survive with a team where I have an AFK. I might. I think I think just just take that little nugget when you queue up for ARAM. And be like, yeah, I should try okay, to win. Okay, so strategy number one is don't AFK. Don't AFK. <laughs> it try and try to win. Like like try to win. Okay. It, yeah. I, I don't. I I I know it sounds crazy, but it just it it, it happens all of the time. In ARAMs, and I think it's really unfortunate because it hurts the game mode. Is you have people literally not trying to win, and it, you're 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 still in a competitive game. It's still a five v five environment. It, it, you know, like it's like if I went to go play intramural hockey, right? And then I get on the ice, and I'm just like, I'm going to practice shooting the puck against the board, even though I'm in the middle of a game, because I want to practice shooting the puck against the board. Well, I 
it, it makes no sense. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a competition. So it's, 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 it's little. I know, it, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I think a lot of people would relate to the fact that they've queued up for an ARAM game before and then not even conceive I, trying to win. I, I have a video then uh, to share with you that might make your head explode. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, Gentos and some other members of the community and I were playing ARAMs uh, yeah, probably a few weeks ago. And um, our goal the entire game was to get the enemy nexus down to as little health as possible and then surrender. <laughs> right? There, yeah, see, I, and I had them do that to me one time. It was Astros, Gensos, um, uh, I want to say Mirabolan was in there, and one other guy. And we were playing, and we were about to win, and the four of them surrendered. <laughs> And I needed one win for my um, for one of the quests that I was trying to complete. And oh, poor bastard. they surrendered. We ended up losing the next two games just because we lost the next two games. I stayed up later than I wanted to just to lose those games because I just wanted to complete that quest and open a chest. Got and it. so I still hold it against them. I hate all of you. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and that that's, that's a great example, Zell, of not trying to win and i just don't get it like you get you you get more experience when you win huh you know like everyone likes a little pop but i i guess i'm just competitive in nature that's what i love about league of legends is the competitive nature even if i'm playing an aram i i agree it's, with you I, I i enjoy the competitive nature i think um so i've been playing arams with you recently and i have been trying to win i've also been um hearing you giving me a lot of coaching in game which has been very helpful because i actually didn't think about strategy in aram at least a whole lot until um yeah we started playing more together so um one of the things and I'll, you can go on to the to the other ones but the first thing that you have taught me is that um clearing the wave is like the most important thing um at least at, at like a base level right because mm -hmm. um when the wave gets up on your tower it then frees up the enemy team to basically do whatever the fuck they want to you um, and by clearing the wave, you then defend yourself from those attacks. And like, that seems kind of like basic. Um, but for me, it was very counterintuitive for me when the wave would crash and I would see the enemy team coming closer, I would attack the enemy champions. And that's not always the correct move, at least. So I am believing now, um, <laughs> anyway, you can correct me a little bit on this or, or tweak it a little bit, but yeah, like, so how important is clearing the wave? When should you clear the wave um, versus attack the enemy champions? Like, how does that actually, like, play out in your mind? So, in my mind, you clear the wave always. The wave is the most important tool. Um, it, 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 it's, it's how you win the game. Now, people are an ARAM to skirmish, right? So they're like, okay, let's, let's go fight it out. Sure. And, and you can, and you can do that, and you can have a good time, and, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to win the game, you clear the wave, you push, you get control of that two mid bushes. Though right. that is your power point. That's when they can't see you and you can do stuff. You know how powerful the bush is in Summoner's Rift. That's why you hide in it. Right. That's why right. supports stand in the bush when you're in when there's an ADC and there's a support. Mm -hmm. That's that's why the jungles are sitting in the bushes waiting for someone to come. It's because knowledge is power. And lack of knowledge is a lack of power. And when they can't see exactly where you're standing, when they don't know where that hook's coming from, when they don't know where that karma mantra cue's coming from, they can't dodge it. Right. So if you control the lane, you control the game. It's, 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 it's really it's that really simple. simple. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me. I mean, as a mid laner um, and, and in the push meta that we've been in for almost a year now, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, just clear the fucking wave, push to win. Um, another thing that you mentioned, and like, you know, this uh, didn't seem important to me at all um, until you actually <laughs> described it and, and why, but getting off the fountain first and getting to the bush first is like a really big part of oh, having yeah. the advantage in Abraham. Can you describe like how that works? Um, yeah. Yeah, take it, Tycho. Uh, well, I mean, imagine you are Blitzcrank, okay? Right. Wouldn't you be 10 times scarier if you were already in the enemy's uh, middle bush? Right. And then instead of them being the smart person and, I don't know, maybe throwing a snowball 
or something else that gives vision um they just walk in there blindly and then you're with your five teammates and you get the easiest first blood in history in like <laughs> in like 30 seconds right. that is exactly it's it's it's, it's like it's like anybody tells you when you play a normal game of Summoner's Rift, the game doesn't start uh, when minions spawn. The game starts when you're loaded up into the map, okay? Those first uh, 14 seconds you take to buy your items and and just, like, you know, decide whether or not you're going to invade, like, you got to be ready for that, right? You mm -hmm. can't just be showing up late to the, late to the party because you're going to get counter-invaded and then you're going to lose, okay? Or you're you're not going to invade in time because that, that extra half second you took just, you know, texting texting your girlfriend that you don't have, uh now now you now the enemy knows you're there because you, they put that uh that uh that ward in the bush yeah so uh, it's the same thing in aram you know like you want to get there first take control of that enemy bush and you know just hopefully one of them's an idiot and walks up close to you then you just kill them right very simple or at the very least you blow their flash so getting very, off the fountain easy. first getting to the bush first <coughs> gives yeah. you basically like the drop on the enemy yeah, but, but Tycho. How exciting is it when you get that Blitzcrank in ARAM and you rush right out and you get that beautiful bush position and they run right up and you hook them and you have two teammates there and two of yours are sitting on the fountain and then all of a sudden the other five teammates for the opposing team show up. How does that feel? Oh my. It's such a great feeling. It's like, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, 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 I did my job, guys. Thank you so much. You guys didn't do your goddamn job. I just, I just wasted like like 30 seconds of my life. I, I, oh. Like it's and the thing is, it's, 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 it's not even it's not even if you have if you have that champion like Blitzcrank, it's if they have a champion like Blitzcrank. Exactly. So maybe you might beat them there first, and now you have vision control, right? And so he has, just, and, you've, and you've gained power. You've gained power yeah. in the game. Vision the, is vision is power. Okay. And the second you lose that first bush, they control all of the waves. All of the waves will crash into your turret. You were playing with five guys standing right next to the turret. That's always fun. You know, like, I really like just standing there and trying to, like, you know, hit a minion because you have no control over that bush. You're terrified of that pike sitting in that bush ready to pull you. And so you can't move towards it. And why is that? Because if two of you start off the game and three of you are haven't even bought your items yet and you're standing in that bush, you have to walk away because you don't know how many of them started. So it is... It is critical mass, and I, there's the, it always infuriates me when I'm like, "Come on, guys!" And they're like, "Hey, I, you know, like," and they show up at a minute and a half, like, "Well, I went to take a piss." I encourage <laughs> all of you, um, you can pee before you queue up for the game. It's 40 seconds, you know, like, um, I, I don't know oh. how long it takes you to piss. Maybe a minute if you've got, you know, like a really, you know, you really gotta go. Just do that before you queue for the game. There's, there's, you're really not saving yourself any fucking time. It's, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. Like, okay, like good. You to piss or, or you just be alpha. Yeah, than, I would prefer. I would absolutely prefer you piss yourself because that just shows how little control you have over your body and your mind. So you should piss yourself. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So we got get off the fucking fountain. Try and get vision control and like. Uh, control the map as soon as possible right so you can have the drop on the enemy yep and clear waves like mm -hmm. make that your primary focus um now what else any other any other strategies that start to come to mind maybe knowing when to die because ah, dying is good one. Uh, di dying is very 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 huge like i myself haven't haven't like mastered it pretty well but i i got i have a good understanding you know it's like it's knowing um who is alive on your team who is alive on their team and how much gold you have and how close you are to getting that nearest objective or how close the enemy is to getting your objective mm -hmm. right so if you get an ace and you're able to take down turret i'm assuming you're going to have at least 1500 gold or 2000 gold in your bank sure that is a perfect time to go execute yourself and then go back and buy items uh the worst the worst time that i've seen is like where it's in the middle of the game and the, the, the teams are pretty evened out but this one guy wants to wants to go back because he has 800 gold and he has enough to like finish his item, right? Sure. But sure. timers are going to be like 25, 30 seconds long, and they can easily like four or five before you guys. I literally just, just committed this mistake. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, like 40 you made a terrible, you made a terrible mistake. <laughs> um, it's 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 basically taking those things into account. You know, like how much gold you have and like what you need and at what point of the game are you at? Right. 
So it's it, it takes some time to get used to it, but it's knowing when to die is the difference between winning or losing. Right. And it's hap it's I, I, I can count it. It's happened more times than I can count. Like where people die at the wrong time and we lose the game, or we lose two turrets and inhib from one death. Yeah, and it's kind that's, of like in summoner so shirts when you're like learning when to back in lane phase, right? Yeah, you're like, I have this much mana, this much health. What will happen if I back? I think I can get to lane fast enough. All of those things you kind of have to calculate yourself, and you just more or less learn through experience. But um, yeah, with Amram in particular, as the game goes on, dying is a much much bigger deal. Um, and you have to really consider um, if getting that war mogs or getting finishing, you know, um, whatever item it is that you really, really need is going to be worth it. Um, because if they could actually win the game, then it's not going to actually matter. And, and something you have to think about is how critical are you to the team? Yes. So yeah. let's say you are the only wave clear on your team and you have... 2,500 gold and you you can get that next big item but you're the only wave clear on the team and they're at your nexus right yeah. you have to be there like you have to survive because no one else on your team is clearing that wave and if you can't clear that wave you can't defend so you know like it, it's it's so critically important that you understand how valuable you are at that time let's say four of them are dead and three of your guys are dead and you're the way and you have someone else who's got wave clear then you might be able to die, but make sure you ping, you know, back for your other teammates. It's really important to communicate when you're going to die for nothing. That's, for, a, that's for... actually a secondary part of this is possibly baiting your teammates is always an option. Oh, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> because like, I'm like, I'm going to go die, and then I run in and die, and then I realize I was talking to the four people, and then the fifth guy who's not in our Discord call jumps in with me and dies. And I'm like, well, that, that was not the goal. Right. It was The goal was for me to die, not, but, not yeah. me to take you with me. Especially like game, if you basically, I think you have to think of it in terms of if you get picks, if you win a fight, then you can die, and um, if you don't get that, you have to be extremely careful on whether or not you're going to decide to do that or not. And and, and the the other big thing, and I, I I talked to you about this yesterday, Zill, is you could be dominating, right? You could be up thirteen kills to two, and mm -hmm. um, still only have like minimal damage on the turret just because of how the game's played out. Sure. And you guys start getting low. You got four of your members low. Now they come in and they ace you. Yeah. Now it's 13 kills to seven, but they just got two turrets. Right. And there's only four turrets in this game mode. So they just got two turrets and you guys were way ahead and now you're not. So it's sometimes you have to realize when you're losing a fight and you need to pull back because you need at least one member alive. Sometimes even if they're not a wave clear member, if they are a wave crew member, that's way better. But just someone who might be able to stop the push of the other team into your turret. So, like, if you got four people who just died, don't run in there to see if you can get a kill against the one guy who's low. Mm -hmm. Because just your presence near a turret will at least prevent them from pushing two turrets. Right. So, it's... It, 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 that that goes back to when you die, but it's also how you play a team fight. Because if, you, let's say I'm I'm Zareth and we get into a team fight and we're getting our ass kicked, I I run. I I don't I don't fight right. it out because I can single handedly prevent them from doing anything to the turret. I can clear that wave in three abilities, right? Mm -hmm. And so even though I may have been able to help get two more kills, those two more kills would have cost us a turret or two. And the turrets are far more important than the kills. enough damn okay see they're strats man yeah, they're yeah. strats some oh, you real smart, detail smart. real good information here um i think the last question i have for you is uh so champ select is pretty big deal in summoner's rift um obviously it's very different in aram but is there anything that you should like definitely not play or try not to play in aram or something you should try to focus on doing when it comes to maybe balancing your team comp or anything like that um, I love when someone will go out of their way to take a tank, because tanks are very good in ARAM, especially because they're not as plentiful. When you build um, AP on them, though, right? Oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then, you're an, then you're an AP burst Maokai, right? And so 
they, they you get that sapling to explode it for half their health, and you laugh and you laugh, and then you dive in and you die instantly. So that's always that's always a good time. Sorry. No, I was being I don't, facetious. Um, like, yeah, I know, I know. Okay, I don't sure. I don't judge you trying, but I, like in ARAM, I don't judge trying out different builds. What I would prefer is if you say, hey, I'm going AP Maokai in the champ select. I won't judge you. I'll just say, okay, that's not a tank. That's a AP Burst Mage, right? Sure. So then I can better choose who I'm going to play. Um, take, for instance, let's say you have uh, a tank and three AP on the team, and you get Kai'Sa. Right. And you're like, I don't like playing AD Kai'Sa. <laughs> I like playing AP Kai'Sa. Well, AP Kai'Sa really fucking sucks when you have three other APs, right? So now the other team only has to build against... You know, magic resist. You're like, well, I really want to play AP Kaisa. Right. Just say it. Just say it in chat then. Be like, I know it makes no sense, but I'm going to play AP Kaisa because that's what I want to play. And someone else might reroll and then try and get some AD damage on the team. So I'm not going to judge because it is ARAM. So don't, I, I'm not going to judge you for trying different builds or trying something new. Um, if you if you do want to really try and win, though, you know, rounding out your team comp is a very good way to give yourself an advantage on the other team because a lot of teams don't try and round out their team comp. So you'll have one ADC, you'll have a support that you know is going full AP, so it's not really a support. And you could be on like a champ that you are going to have some fun with, but you look at your team comp and you're just like, there's no way that's going to work. And you reroll and you get a tank and you can help them win that game because of that decision. Sure. But I'd say communication is important in the pre... If you're going to do something weird, like maybe you want to play AD LeBlanc, right? Yeah. I've seen it quite a few times in ARAM, be like, AD LeBlanc, just type it. People might say that's stupid, people might not, but at least some people will appreciate that, okay, he wants to play AD LeBlanc, no problem, I'll see if I can get more AP, or more wave clear, right? Because AD LeBlanc is going to have fucking terrible wave clear, so um, <laughs> maybe that's something that I now see that our team comp needs, so like, I'll play Oriana, even though I kind of fucking suck at Oriana, at least I can clear a wave, so... Sure. Um, it, it, it all starts in the draft, right? It always starts in the draft. It starts in the draft for Sonar's Rift, and it starts in the draft for ARAM. You just don't have as much control over the draft in ARAM. But, you you know, it's really easy to get rerolls now. I get a reroll every single game that I play. So, you and the bench is was an excellent addition. Oh, so now... It, it was it's, per, that is it the, was best the best addition they've ever brought to ARAM. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, <laughs> you know what's you know you know what that also did? It brought a whole new level of pettiness into the fucking <laughs> chancellor. Because when you when you ask somebody four times, yo, let me get your champion. Let me get your champion. And they say no with no answer in the pregame lobby chat. And then all of a sudden they switch and I take it. And then I'm just like, okay, well, why didn't you just give it to me first? Why did you what? Why did you just give it to me first? Because <laughs> I had to oh, think about God. it. Oh, man. <laughs> that's that that was a whole new level of petty but hey for the it's bench, better, it's, i'll take it, it it's better than the opposite which used to happen where you'd be like hey can i play him and then they're like re-roll and you're like <laughs> son right. of a bitch they're just gone to the ether then they're never coming back yeah, okay. you don't get to play them no one gets to play them you're fucked <laughs> and suddenly you know the game you were going to use to untilt yourself from you've the just tilted <laughs> has just made your evening much much worse <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got another one that I'll bring up that I see some people complain about. Um, Backdoors, in my opinion, are legal, smart, and fun. And I love doing it. Like a Pantheon backdoor. Are legal. Legal. I love how you said legal. First. Yeah, they're legal. They're they're perfectly <laughs> legal. Because it's people are like... That they're, they're like, oh, that's so bullshit. You're just trying to win. I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm trying to win. I did in your face. Backdoor. I love doing it with Twitch um, or um, Teemo is Teemo, great TF. for backdoors. You just sit Pantheon, there, Pantheon, let them all walk fate. by. Yeah, there's a lot of good. There's a lot there of was, good uh, backdoors. I actually people. had one game where we lost um, because they had a Shaco and they had a Galio, and then we just we were only worried about the Shaco, right? For good reason. And then he managed to get past us, and then. He was backdooring, but we we're like, and okay, Galio we, ulted to him. Then Galio <laughs> ulted to him, and then they had enough time to destroy the Nexus. And I'm like, fuck, because we only accounted for the Shaco, because we could get to him in time. He was not doing enough damage until Galio came into the picture. We're like, oh, yeah. So, so I see a lot of people complain about him, but I think they're awesome. And I always yeah. have fun when I backdoor. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, everybody's better start playing ARAM now. 
Uh, they need to practice, and once yeah. we uh, get teams signed up, come uh, I think April fifteenth is my cutoff date. Then um, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys can start practicing with each other using these strats you learn from the ARAM master himself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it'll they be call a lot me of fun. Danger ARAM penguin. <laughs> Pretty much at this point, <laughs> I think you've earned your title. Dane Ram. <laughs> Um, All right, guys. Oh, I do. Wait, hold on. There's one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, Danger. I want to get your opinion on this because I right. want to go back to the item thing we were talking earlier. What you remember a while back, Riot was talking about whether or not they wanted to re- remove Warmog in ARAM. What do you think about that? Well, if you notice, they did do an adjustment to Warmog, so um, it heals less fast, I believe. Um, like I there's less, I... there's less heal per second. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's still, if you're gonna walk around for forever, I think, it, and I'm, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I wish I could pull it up. I can't see it right now, but it. All I know is that they did adjust it so that it's hopefully. Be, but in my opinion, it still needs to be in the game. Otherwise, poke comps are still just always gonna. That's win. exactly how I yeah. feel as well. And, and, and so I like having warmogs in it. I like if it's adjusted to be a little less strong. I don't have a problem with that. Um. But I, I, I think they've done it. I, I, I mean, there are some tank cops that are absolutely devastating. Like, if they can hit their snowballs and they get onto your back line, I mean, Zareth with, you know, like a Garen in his face, he just ends up getting trounced, right, mm-hmm. real fast. I mean, and granted, Garen is very strong in ARAM as well. Yeah, um, Garen's not exactly a pure tank, but, like, if you have a nice tanky bruiser and then three or four other tanks, like, it's really powerful. Yeah, you just got to get there, right? Because you're going to be pushed into your turret throughout the whole first portion of the game. So you need, you need to. Tr- if you can have like just one wave clear on the team, that would really help you. But yep. once you once you hit, you know, like level like ten, and you've hit some item spikes, and maybe they're all magic, you know, and you can or all AP, and you can go magic resist. Um, you can just end up rolling them down. Um, and it can be it can be a lot of fun because they thought they had like this unbeatable team comp of like Zig, Zareth, Nidalee. And you're like, oh, okay. You, know, you guys are unbeatable for the first nine minutes, and then you're just so beatable in the last. You know, the thing about Warmog is like, whenever I get, whenever I get Nar or Garen, I am so happy because those are the two champions that I'm not gonna have a problem playing that game because I just need to buy one item and then I buy Warmogs and I'm set. I don't have to go back. I'll be strong for a while, so I can delay my death, right? And the other great thing is that I have no mana cost. Hold on, you you right? buy Warmogs on Garen? What? You buy Warmogs on Garen? I can if I want to, just for the hell of it. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, his his uh, his heal is good, but it's not as strong as Warmogs normally. So huh. yeah. it takes you a lot longer to heal it's up. It's more health. I mean, with Warmogs, you like, you're, with... you're there in, like, that with Garen. Yeah. It's, like, like, four seconds later, you're at full health. It's my absolute fave to build on uh, Nar because I, I feel so... so I, I can just... I just got to get back to 100 Rage. And then I'm useful for a team fight again, and I have no mana cost. I feel I feel like I have there's no repercussions for me. That's that's what it feels like to me. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, they I, tried removing it for a while, and it just made all of the it it just made it feel like you you yeah. lost the second you see the other team has like mm-hmm. two pokers, Sona, right? Sona went to a ninety percent win rate. Yeah, just like... <laughs> yeah. Oh well, Sona they 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 nerfed the hell out of her, and she went from seventy to sixty one, and they're like, well, it's a start. <laughs> so... <laughs> but here here's the other thing build pass right you can build sona to be a um ap explosion mage right with lich bane and all that you could do so much damage yeah, I love lich bane. but you just you you don't win as often with that build so it, mm-hmm. it, you know like you can do it but just let people know that you're doing it that goes back to the builds because if you're not doing it if you're going you know like tier into rod of ages into chalice into i can heal everyone all the time and they're always going to be full. That's the Sona I prefer because that's the way that, in my opinion, she's like devastating. The same thing with Soraka with Warmogs. She could just heal for days. So, yep. you know, it's yep. it, it can it can be so powerful being just the person who's running around hitting W. Yep. Cool. Well, I think that covers it. So, mm-hmm. let's go play some Mayrams. <laughs> I'm I'm down. All right, guys. All right. Thanks well, everybody was... for listening. Yeah. We'll see y'all later. It's a good episode. Night. See later. Ya.